Let's take an early look at the Cessna 310 accident out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is the accident where the pilot departed Santa Fe on runway 20. He called back to the tower that he'd had an engine failure and it appears as if he was trying to return back to the airport on one engine. He crashed nearby. He was the only person on board the aircraft and he died. No one on the ground was injured. Charlie, runway 20, right turns approved, clear take off, let's go. What happened? So let's take a look at the conditions. They will certainly be a contributing factor to this accident. It was a warm morning in Santa Fe, even though it was only 9 a.m., around 80 degrees or so, calm winds and clear skies. What that 80 degrees meant is a density altitude of about 9,000 feet. So a density altitude of 9,000 feet is gonna degrade performance of an aircraft even if it's turbocharged. And this one was, this was a Cessna T310R, which is the turbocharged engines. And with those engines, single engine at sea level, it should be able to climb at roughly 400 feet per minute. The single engine service ceiling is 17,200 feet, which means the aircraft on a single engine should have been able to climb at 50 feet per minute up to 17,200. So what that means is the aircraft should have had some climb performance even though the density altitude was as high as it was on a single engine, even at max gross weight. We don't think this pilot was at max gross weight simply because he was the only person on board the aircraft. So at full, full fuel with just the pilot, he would have been well below gross weight unless he carried some kind of cargo or equipment that would have brought him above something the NTSB will be able to verify. So let's take a look at the pilot. 72 year old ATP rating, multi-engine land, single engine land, C ratings in there, but here's what's significant. Look at the type ratings in the B-17, the B-25, the DC-3. He also flew Warbirds, the Bearcat and the Hellcat. The reason this is significant is these aircraft take good stick and rudder skills to fly and they take a lot of control movement, which would have been helpful to this pilot trying to manage a single engine 310 at low altitude just after takeoff. So given these skills that he had, why did the aircraft crash? Why did the engine fail and why was the pilot unable to control the airplane? So let's take it the, look at the engine failure first. So the engine, f engines fail for really four primary reasons. One, there's some kind of mechanical failure, a piston or a rod failure or something where the engine just mechanically can't perform. If that happens, there's really nothing the pilot can do about it except deal with it. The other reasons are an engine needs fuel, spark, and air in the right combination. So if any of those are starved or if that combination gets wrong, then that can also cause an engine failure. Now, a known issue with Cessna 310s is the complicated fuel system. A Cessna 310 has the main tanks on the outboard. The tip tanks are the main tanks in a Cessna 310. Then there's auxiliary tanks that are a little bit inboard on the wings, and then some 310s have locker tanks just above the engines. So why the engine failed is unknown and something the NTSB will hopefully be able to determine. The second question is, why couldn't this experienced, skilled pilot control the aircraft with an engine failure in an aircraft that should have had some climb performance available to him single engine? Now the first thing is, a 310 is known to be a tricky airplane single engine. With the tip tanks, it can get into a kind of rolling situation and the gear on a 310 is electric. So depending on where the engine quit on departure, it would have taken a while for the gear to retract and all that time, that's extensive drag on the airplane before it cleans up 
and the pilot can get to that single engine climb performance that he's expecting. So the procedures for the 310 would be important here for the pilot to have down cold and in memory. And that is as soon as he experienced the engine failure, to recognize the situation, to verify it, and then to act accordingly with a checklist, which is clean the aircraft up, get the pitch down to accelerate uh, the airspeed, get the prop feathered, and now you've actually ideally got to bank slightly into the operative engine. So you want about a three to five degree bank into the operative engine, and that's what's going to give you that best climb performance. In this case, the pilot makes a left turn in coming back to the runway, and that bank angle would have degraded the climb performance pretty significantly. So let's talk about our lessons learned. So first, this is not a Cessna 310, but it's a, it's a light twin similar to the 310. First, when, for all pilots, we can take a look at and remind ourselves of the impact of density altitude. Even on a turbocharged engine, a density altitude of 9,000 feet is going to substantially reduce your performance, even with all systems in all engines operating normally. It's a tough thing to understand until you actually experience it, but impact of density altitude on thrust, on lift, degrades an aircraft performance all the way around. So this accident will remind us of those impacts. Secondly is to remember the procedures for single engine. One of the most demanding elements of flight in general aviation is an engine failure in a light twin aircraft. Pilots must understand the procedures and they must be ready to implement them promptly and correctly. So with an engine failure, the aircraft is going to yaw hard away from the operative engine and the pilot must immediately respond to that, keep the aircraft control, clean the aircraft up, identify the problem, verify the correct engine to, to, to shut down, and then take action on the engine and fly the airplane. Those single engine performance numbers are based on a wings level climb. So any kind of turn back towards a runway or towards anywhere else is gonna reduce your performance and you don't have a whole lot to give in a light twin single engine, especially at high density altitude. And a final lesson learned that may come out of this accident for light twin pilots is to recognize there may be situations where your operative engine can't provide any kind of climb performance and perhaps may not even be able to provide level flight performance. If that's the case, you've done all you can and cleaned up the airplane and the aircraft is still descending, your best option is to pull the power back on the operative engine and accept your best off airport landing in the best location you can find. That's a tough pill to swallow for a lot of light twin uh, pilots. They have a tough time getting to that transition, but it may very well be your best option. Don't fight it. If the aircraft is not climbing and performing, accept what you've got and deal with the best options you have available. We'll update you on this uh, accident as more details come. You can find us at airsafetyinstitute.org or on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.